Um, I don't know if this is going to be the easiest one or the hardest one to do. Yeah, me neither. Correct, you just you just you, you just pulled the text out of your draft. Correct. So you have four, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Should be six. Yep. Um, then we have add a rather added a rather elaborate example on how layered attestation could take place. Seems one days ago. Seems a while. I guess we never looked at it before. Yeah, this is Hank. So this is uh, this text is not intended to stay this way, but I wanted to have a common understanding how layer attestation works and what it does encompass, and what are we I trying to talk that. about? Yeah. So there the was a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Both of the other ones have comments that I don't think have been updated in the actual text yet, even though there's been responses and comments. Right. Okay. So notes you're saying is that we have asked for changes and we haven't gotten them yet. Is what you're saying? Yeah, that's me. Um, uh, since the uh, uh, SIoT hackathon, I have been relatively dormant. So, uh, oh my God, um, that is that was on me. Next week. Yeah, so same thing for the other one. If there's been changes or questions, yeah, there's just discussion. Hey, Ned, Johnny. Hey, Ned. Hey, Ned. Um, we were just going through the high level, uh, trying to figure out which um, which issue we should we can we can progress quickly on, and which ones will take more time. Noting, we noted that the two of the pull requests haven't really been edited or updated since two weeks ago. So, um, I guess the question is to both this one is oh, I that one already. Um, if anyone else has read it, and if there's any complaints that we can't fix afterwards. Yeah, since Ned just joined, right now the text in this pull request is identical to the text in the uh, uh, use cases section of uh, the Thaler architecture document. So I just pulled it directly over. Just in case you've read mine before, but you haven't heard the pull request, I'm just saying it's the same. So okay. if you haven't read mine either, then you should still read it. So I still would like to have the workflow for um cases um dave's argued that all of these can be implemented in either workflow and i don't dispute that yeah um, so what what michael and i talked about at uh, hackathon is it may still be useful in addition to this to have you know an example that includes an actual implementation story that has uh because right now this is very generic, right? It doesn't say yeah, whether it's yeah. background or background check or passport, because it could be either one. And in addition to this, it might be useful to have a more uh, specific instantiation walkthrough, um, but that could be done in a separate pull request, whether it's in a different section or the same section or whatever. Well, I could imagine adding text sort of, as I've put my cursor here, here, yep. that um, actually provided some subsection that was a very specific case uh, example that there example blah blah example blah instantiation yeah. yeah and i think that would be okay i just i just want p i i i i'm concerned that um some readers are dim and need to have the need to need to really see their ta their case exactly mm -hmm. in in the text or they they just don't get it right yep. um so uh, unless there's objections or someone who would like to read it more, I would propose just to to uh, merge this and go on to the other issues. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, this is Hank. I'm okay with that. Um, I want to give Paul the opportunity to uh, um, maybe 
um, as a suggestion to, to skim the, uh, the actual use case document and maybe you can find yourself or your use cases in there. And if you don't, uh, maybe uh, take them as an example to create your own. So uh, this is basically Michael's uh, uh, recommendation operationalized uh, because you have to find yourself in this use case section. And if you do not, that might be a gap we have to still fill. So uh, that is what be a, a message to, uh, uh, to my turn. <laughs> Thanks. I, I will definitely take a look at that. I mean, our, for us, we're not necessarily, we're sort of interested in making sure that, yes, that we, that rats can support a broad set of use cases. So if we have something in mind that we think is maybe not supported in some way, we'll, we'll definitely let you know. Yeah, so, so, but it, I think that, that we're also interested in uh, if you have a very specific use case that um, is falls within this and you're very specific about it, then it's, it's I think, much easier for people to grapple with something uh, concrete than um, very abstract sometimes. So I agree, I, I, agree. I understand, yep. yeah. Okay, all right, so um, let's move on to the 11 open issues here. Um, I'd like to nominate something. So define layered attestation, it's in the pull request now. Um, Need to edit that and come back to it. Uh, what pull request is that? Uh, for me, one of the lowest hanging fruits, which I don't know if it needs discussion or if it just needs to be done, is the one that's the uh, section ordering one that moves such and such before such and such. Never know what that one was. New section. Yeah. 34 is. Uh, one of the easiest ones to do. I just don't know if it requires discussion. Maybe maybe we pull up the table of contents and decide whether we agree that 4.1 should move down or 6 should move up or something like that. Um, okay. Um, let me see. Where can I find the table of contents? In the built out document? Yeah. I just have to find where it, we, we have to, I have to build it and I'll post it. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's move back to this one in a moment then. Let me build that out and so we can see what that means. What, what next? Any other low hanging fruit in this list? I still, can you still hear me? Yeah, I don't think there's any other low hanging fruit that uh, I'm staring at. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure what 40 is, but I probably used to since I see comments on that one. Is that low hanging fruit? Usually the statement applies to both models. Section, the, the second paragraph of section seven seems to be not very clear to me. Uh, there, section seven. Is it the second paragraph of section seven? The tester assume it's your trust to verify. William, do you know what Frank exactly means here? Uh, I know what it means. I'm just I'm trying to read through the text. Whoops. Okay. See whether I agree with it or not. Okay. I think I understand. If we go back to his... Uh, you uh frank says in both models the attester should trust the verifier i don't believe that's true 
I'm looking at the comment at the, at the bottom here, right? He says, yes, my and my point is for both models, the assessor should also trust the verifier. I do not believe that that is true. I think in the, oh, hold on. Maybe I'm backwards. Hold on. I got to read it through again here. Uh, ground check model. I understand his opinions, uh, why you write um, in this uh, way. And uh, uh, in the background check model, uh, uh, the attester receives the attesting result from the verifier, so it needs to trust the verifier. So you write this in this section. But in the passport model, the results, um, um, the, uh, the attester, uh, the attester doesn't receive the attesting result from the verifier. So you, 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 don't, you didn't write this, I think. Um, I, I'm wondering if I wrote something backwards. So, um, can you go, meaning there might be an error in the text here. Can you go back to the built out version? Yeah, let me redo this again here. Um, because what I'm wondering is if this is an error where it should be saying in solutions following the passport model is what I was. I'm just trying to read through this again because I'm wondering if background check should be uh, passport. But is is there text in here that talks about the passport model? It's kind of what I'm scanning for because this might be an error. <clears throat> Aren't the trust relationships based on role? Yeah. In uh, the background check, the attester doesn't have any relationship with the verifier, right? He sends it over to the uh, relying party and the relying party picks the verifier. So certainly the relying party picks the verifier, but the attester may have no knowledge of the verifier. That's why I'm wondering if background check of that sentence is supposed to be passport. Um, so a trust okay. relationship between the attester and verifier and the background check model is nice to have and eventually yeah, also if it has to go to back to it, but not necessary. Right. So just in the analogy of, uh, you know, I'm doing a job application or a loan application, I don't even have any knowledge that there's some background check agency that's doing, you know, the uh, background check or the financial check or whatever. I don't have any trust in that thing. That's up to the relying party. He chooses that and I don't even have any knowledge of it. I being the verifier or I being the attester? The attester. I'm just uh, reading the, the paragraph. In, in the passport case, the attester isn't trusting the verifier either. He's just forwarding the results onto the relying party who then trusts the, ver the verifier. It seems like it's the same trust model. It's just at how you route the messages. So I think Frank, your Frank's point is that. Uh, I think he's suggesting just deleting the first phrase up to the comma. Starting with the attester. I think that's what he's proposing. So I just want to read through from top to bottom. So hold on a second. I'm just going to be silent while I read through to see if that flows. I, I Paragraph, even with the change, I don't, I don't think the tester is trusting anybody. He's trying to assert his own trustworthiness, and it's the relying party and the verifier that have the trust, the a priori trust relationship. In the passport model, the tester certainly uh, trusts the uh, the verifier because you send your evidence off to it and you get back your attestation result and you just supply that to all of the things. And so you're trusting that that thing is giving you the right ticket so that you can do what you need to do. You have an ex and you're the one that has chosen the, the verifier, right? And so you have some trust because you're choosing it. Right. I see that the point. Trust, that the trust is that what are you trusting them for? It's simply to issue a credential that you give to somebody else. You're not correct. Right, it's, I don't. I don't. I'm not even sure that I. I mean, you say it's choosing them, but oh, okay. I mean, 
someone says you you need to you need to fill out this form before you can pass here and you go and fill out that form i mean are um, you trusting the passport agency when you fill out a passport application and they give you I, a passport yeah i i, I Yes, you may be trusting, trusting them, them to give are... you something that you can give to a, um, you know, uh, correct guard, and they will t accept it. But it's like, do you trust them? Right. That that's to... the last phrase there. Yeah. You will rely on the attestation result it obtains in order to access resources. And, and I guess you're trusting them also in the sense because you may need to reveal uh, personal information or whatever to them. Mm -hmm um and you're you you so you have some so you have some expectations there but i just i find it difficult to say that this word is trust i don't i don't think the paragraph entirely i i think i would just strike the whole paragraph i don't all right i don't have any objections to that now not that i've read through it a couple times i don't feel strongly either way okay with that We, this is saying, do we want to have the uh, uh, inverse statement that we do not have a trust relationship between the attester and something here? Mm. No. Good question, but I'm thinking no. <clears throat> there's a there's a privacy there's a privacy consideration. I don't know if it belongs in the trust model section that an, an attester is is divulging information that's potentially privacy sensitive and there appears to be no control over that once he divulges it to somebody whether it's a, a verifier or a relying party or somebody else who's you know will pick your pick your model <clears throat> he loses control of that information at that point it could go through any number of hops to any number of entities he's He's trusting all of them, but he's not necessarily um, managing that trust by authenticating them. It just bounces around. I think that is a good point, and I think that might actually be useful to mention in the trust model section. I think it was, Michael, you had said that you're trusting for PII, and so that might be useful to say is that in the, just wondering here, it seems like the a tester in the, it certainly trusts anybody that it sends evidence to for for confidentiality, right? So, in say background check, it's trusting the verifier, and in uh, sorry, in passport, it's trusting the verifier, and in background check, it's trusting the lying party. It's not. It's but it's 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 trusting them and all of the and so anybody that sends them to. Yeah, yeah. It's trusting them to not disclose it to, uh, you know, the 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 public or unauthorized entities or whatever. Um. Okay. Just. Uh... I mean, we can do this in a separate request if you want to open a separate issue for the privacy one, but uh, I'm fine tracking under the same one either way. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just write it in there so you can see it um there is an implicit trust that the tester must place into the verifier um as it this as the uh tester uh must must disclose potentially private information to the verifier in order to obtain the attestation results is that something like is that what you guys have in mind yeah but you're also you need to just capture the idea that anything that the is disclosed to the verifier the verifier may share with any number of other entities that the verifier chooses i'm also working on sample text i'm just going to paste a sentence or two to compare so this is an example sentence that might be the beginning of the paragraph i'm just working up sample snippets to edit or wordsmith or throw out whether we use them or not so 
in in the background check um in the background check we, the, the tester may also be showing his evidence to the relying party in the background check yes yes correct yes um and i'm just i don't think we have any scenario in which uh in some scenarios evidence may contain sensitive information personal identifying information okay that's a good word um i don't think we have any way or any requirement in our architecture to be able to encrypt from the attester to the uh verifier that i know of um Correct. And in the background check model, it doesn't make sense because, in general, because the attester doesn't know who the verifier is. Yeah. Or it's the relying party, right? And so it doesn't make sense to encrypt it, right? So that means you're uh, implicitly reviewing the evidence to the relying party, even though the relying party usually just treats it as opaque, right? You can't guarantee if he's nefarious that he's not going to look into it. Yeah, I, I think it seems to me there are orthogonal concepts. I mean, yeah, if the a tester had a had a security association with the verifier, but opened a connection to the relying party, he could certainly encrypt it to the verifier, and and rec and the relying party obviously has nothing more to do with it than to re to forward it onto the verifier. But it's it's orthogonal to this model. So I've not, I've not yet read what Michael you're typing yet, and so I'm independently doing this to compare. So that's my turn. I just, I just, grabbed, your, I just grabbed your text. Uh, yeah, but I would uh, add to what Ned said that we have this. Uh, um, understanding of the source of uh, uh, confidential information that sometimes uh, you have to encrypt it and sometimes you don't might don't want to encrypt that because you feel safe and then you have the the, the trustworthiness and the believability of the uh, uh, deciding entities here so um, I think these are orthogonal concepts actually um, because you, you might want to encrypt something uh, because it's obviously conveyed in the open and that is about you and you don't want to expose anything. And that has nothing to do with how much you trust into the validity, uh, trustworthiness of uh, a test of, uh, sorry, verifier, for example. So I think these are two different trust relationships, I assume. I think your sign of consent, Dave, is also saying that the the the, the um, verifier needs to take care of the information that it it and it's entrusted to take care of the information. And the same thing is true for the relying. So, like your last sentence there is uh, right. I like the last sentence you have there. Um, and it also means that in that case, your lying party is also. And so this is a, uh, it's fine to say that explicitly, just like you did there. I'm look, I'm not sure about your third sentence, but I'm staring at trying to word Smith, but I like your last sentence. Yeah, well, I, well, I understand revealed. Um, if there's end-to-end -end encryption here between entities, it's always revealed at one end. So I think the conveyance is the important part. No, this is saying what once some endpoint has it, they could share it with third parties. You know, I could sell the data to them. And and we don't okay. we don't in general have I mean, Ned said that we could have a relationship uh, between the attester and the verifier in the background check model. But I don't know that we and and that's maybe a feature of some things, but I don't know in general how that would work and i don't think that's a requirement where architecture is putting on the yeah on, on the background <clears throat> check model uh, i'm fine I, i've now read through what you have i'm fine with the text that you have on the screen michael <clears throat> i'm going to put that as the last paragraph yep of that Do 
you can uh, generate a pull request that deletes the other paragraph and then appends this one. Is that the goal? So the I did add the other one already. Okay. The delete. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So, so the last sentence needs to say that the relying it should say more than just the relying party. It's if you think about it in the context of the hybrid model, <clears throat> we, we basic the architecture said, oh, it gets it can be arbitrarily more complicated than this simple than the simple case of passport or background check. And so in this case, it's Maybe. So we always reveal the information to the any uh, number to the of verifier in in we in both models we always input we always have to show the verifier evidence. Mm -hmm. Right, but the, the in a hybrid model <clears throat> there may be multiple verifiers, there may be multiple relying parties, and we main all of them. So so all I can see see is that maybe that's what I'm supposed to do is put in multiple an S. Or entities that that would be fine, Michael. Although for grammar, you probably want to delete the word the in front of it and just reveal two relying parties. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm just <clears throat> the, the 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 sentence is not capturing the. It's it's focused in the context of a, of a particular model. In, in this case, it's the background check model. But I'm trying to understand. But we want to say something that's that relates to all of the possible models. So I'm not sure I agree with Ned as far as what this paragraph needs to say. If we're if the goal is to try and talk about the privacy properties of the background check model. And maybe that's okay, but I think the architectural goal should be to describe the privacy implications of the architecture. And the architecture does anticipate the notion of hybrid and arbitrarily complex hybrid models that we don't even bother to write down. But the number of so, roles but, is still the same. We still have a yeah. tester, verifier, and relying party. And this is talking about it from a perspective of roles. We always and we always reveal the evidence to the to the verifier, no matter how hybrid it. British the of uh, background and passports we uh, the verifiers get to see the evidence right the, yeah. okay the background so, and pass, but hang on the background and passport check models are independent of roles no the role the role it, the, the simple the simple role relationship is look I don't think there's anything to add because right the attester automatically has the evidence because that's who creates right. it right the verifier always gets the evidence because that's the definition of evidence is what goes to a verifier. And this is just saying the evidence also goes to relying parties. Once that's true, then all the roles get the evidence. There's no other gaps, right? Yeah. If it was a pure passport, it could be some hybrid of passport model with multiple multiple relying parties and multiple verifiers. And if they're all passport models, then it's possible the relying parties never see the evidence. But in all the other cases, all the parties get to see the evidence. No matter which hybrid you come up with, the evidence is going to go to uh, a, a testers because it starts there, verifiers, and uh, relying parties. And right. so this paragraph what already covers all those cases. That, the model that you just described yeah. is is orthogonal to the thing we're calling passport and background check. Oh, I disagree. It only goes to relying parties and things that have a background check model somewhere in it. <clears throat> if it's passport everywhere, then the relying party never gets the evidence. So here's a here's an example combination, right? Um, so this one, this guy is a um, the top. Which, the, the, the vertical part is background check, and the yeah, background check. part is passport. Right, exactly. So, so this relying party gets to see uh, all the all the evidence as it goes to this verifier. Okay, this relying party over here doesn't. He just gets to see the attestation results. 
Unless it's encrypted by the attester to the verifier, and then he's just simply a routing node. Oh, so if if the verifier leaks the evidence to the relying party through a covert channel, then that the attester can't see, then we obviously or I could um, go some uh, other way too. Actually, there's a different point there, which is whether any PII can appear in the attestation result is a different issue. Yeah, because the relying parties do get the attestation result. Right, <clears throat> but the the arrow that's called evidence. Flowing through their lying party <clears throat> is just routing. And so any any of these any of the, any of these diagrams that we call models, right? So in this one here, yeah, it's whatever it's, it's routing, but the attester in this one doesn't necessarily know who the verifier is up top, and so you can't necessarily have a encrypted channel there because this is the background check model. The relying party too is the one that gets to choose the verifier, and the attester has no knowledge of that. If you make the assumption that cryptography is enforced at the conveyance protocol layer, then that's correct. If you if you assume that enforcement is applied to the data structure of the evidence, for example, then that's not necessarily correct. In this example, because the top because the vertical lines are being defined as the background check, that's not possible. You can only do in integrity, you can't do uh, confidentiality in the uh, data itself because it doesn't know who the verifier is. So there's no way to do confidentiality when you don't know who the recipient is. You made, it, you made an assertion that the attester doesn't know the verifier. And if that assertion is true, then that's the, your conclusion is correct. But if that assertion is not true, then your conclusion is not correct. We didn't motivate why it is the verifier and a tester can't have an a priori security association. So this is an example. I'm looking at the texture above the diagram. Relying party use an extension of the background check model. Um, so I think in this example, it's true because it's defined as part of the example, right? And you can see figure five, the label under the picture says example combination. There might be other examples where it's different, but uh, to me, all the details are better left into a particular uh, uh, specification rather than trying to cover every possibility in the architecture. <clears throat> it's really, it's, I think that, uh, at least in my mind, the the diagram is ambiguous because you're making some assumptions about whether it's connectivity. I don't know what the arrows mean. I guess anymore. I thought I thought I did, but maybe I don't. Is that you know? Is this trying to say that the evidence, the evidence in the first hop is both integrity and confidentiality protected to the the box that it touches or no, no. it doesn't make any statements about uh integrity or confidentiality protection it's just showing the data flow in these diagrams right <clears throat> we believe that the evidence is is in some container such as an eat and that that probably has a signature which integrity checks it probably all the way up the verifier but an, an eat is a is a jot or a cot, and it could also have confidentiality protection as well. And you could add if you knew. I, I agree with you, Ned. If you knew who the verifier was, you could provide some confidentiality against the relying party. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's. I, I think while I agree with you that that model could exist, I, I find it. I don't know when. I don't know how that would work work in practice. Uh, I don't know what an example would be is what I'm trying to say, but I, I'm not not disputing that, yeah, it could exist um, and would be an enhancement because the relying party would not, in the background check, would not get to see the data. And, and uh, perhaps there's good environment, good reasons why that's a good thing to do in some cases. Um, maybe FIDO or someone else has uh, 
a good example, a, a, a good use case where that's important. Um, I don't know. Um, this is Hank. I would assume that every authenticator, but this is the asserter, uh, sorry, the tester here in FIDO would know it's uh, it's verifier because that one uh, has handcrafted uh, uh, meta certificates and handcrafted uh, reference values for the each. So actually, I would think that uh, in, in FIDO, every attester knows it's verifier and even has a pre-shared secret uh, that should correspond. Any, any managed network is going to have some provisioning entity that's going to set things up and it can create all any trust association that makes sense. If privacy is a consideration, it can create a security association for encryption. So the question is, in that managed network, is it going to be a background check model or is it going to be a passport model? I think it doesn't matter because the re the, 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 the roles defines the, what information goes from an attester to a verifier to a line party, how the, how that information is routed is, is, um, you know, it's uh, esoteric. I, I, it seems like we're really putting a lot of focus on these two models and yeah, they're convenient for, you know, for, for understanding, but I don't think that they're fundamental to. to well, it to seems really easy. Role. It's really easy to, to, to be sure in the passport model that the attester's information is going only to the verifier, right? We just need TLS is enough to solve that problem, right? Uh, yep. Well, it makes okay. it's making some assumptions that the that the that the routers are trustworthy and a bunch of stuff. I mean, I don't. It's like this diagram is not showing the reality of everything that's going on, right? If you're using TLS, it does not have any assumption that the routers are trustworthy. No. Right. But if you're if it's just, I, I think he means the routers being the relying parties in the in this. And this kind of a diagram here. I'm the saying, line party two is routing the evidence, is what he's I'm saying. Sa I'm saying these, di <laughs> these diagrams are taking a bunch of what is a, which is a, a could be a very complex network deployment architecture, and and just talking about the things that are relevant. <clears throat> but if you're trying to talk about security, then you. Then every arrow you can drill into it and say, well, what's underneath that arrow? Well, there's going to be some, some you know, some la layer three router. And there's going to be some layer two, um, you know, hop by hop thing. I mean, it's like it gets really complicated. And if you're trying to say from a security perspective, well, you know, there's no there's no attacker in between these two entities. It's like I don't know how you come to that conclusion based on this diagram. So, so while I agree with this is saying, while I agree with Ned that this diagram does not show all of these assumptions because I think they are not made, um, uh, overloading this diagram with a lot of assumptions is also not helping. So uh, my, my intuitive point of view of figure five is that everything that is an arrow here is a conveyance and no modification. So attestation results are apparently created as the verifier and relayed by the relying party too, and then relayed by the attester. There is no modification happening here from my understanding of looking only at the figure. If I read the text, I might learn more about figure five. For example, that the attester might add something to the attestation result and making it evidence again. Um, could be possible. It's not in this diagram, but it is a, a, a perceivable procedure. But then the relying party would to one to, to do something with it. But it's all assumptions. Nothing of that is happening here. And I think, right. therefore, it should not should the confidentially part between roles. We can just put in a different paragraph and say, next to these model compositions, always take care that relying parties might receive the evidence and even attestation results, and it might not be for them. In this case, confidentiality is key and create your model composition in a way that obfuscates the attestation results or evidence correspondingly. And I think okay. then we're done. 
any of the discussion about integrity or confidentiality, I would like to see in the security consideration section and not back here. Yeah, but, yeah, that's, which, that's, that's what I'm Which saying. is the text we were just working on that Michael was editing, so. Yeah, yeah, so it's, 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 it's all the assumptions we are, we should not uh, imply into this diagram. We just should put these back down into the uh, considerations. We're not saying, this diagram is not trying to say that it's part of the roles architecture that, that relying party is a consumer of evidence. That was not a goal of this diagram. No, that is correct. That, but it might correct. be an observer of evidence but if it's not uh, encrypted. And so- uh, If we, if we assume, if, right. But let's assume that the roles architecture allows for both integrity protection and confidentiality protection, all right? So if we make that assumption, then the arrow from the attester through the relying party to, to the verifier is confidentiality and integrity protected, <clears throat> in which case it's really it, one line it, of evidence. And it is integrity protected and it may be confidentiality protected. Whatever, the, the point is it may, since it may be, then we have to, the point is the semantics of the relying party is not that it's going to do anything other than forward it. And if it tries to look at it you know, when we've made it confidentiality protected, then that's an attack. The architecture is not trying to say that the relying party gets to do something with that evidence. Um, remember one of the one of the models, that, or sorry, not one of the models, one of the uh, points that we had was that the it is that the relying party and the verifier can be collapsed into the same box, meaning the same physical device. And so, be you, the same if point. The, right, if they're the same point, then there's no difference between trusting the verifier and trusting the relying party because it's the same entity. It's just two different roles collapsed into the same box, right? Yeah. But that's, uh, the, uh, it isn't clear that that's what the goal of the, the models for passport and background check are trying to address, right? It's trying to, it's trying to talk about something else, <clears throat> which is how the information, how the, how the information flows. So do you have any suggestions for us on the security consideration section text that we were working on? Because that's what we were saying is that any of the discussion of integrity or confidentiality should be in that text. Yeah, sure. I, th I mean, I think that <clears throat> if it, <clears throat> if it doesn't already say that <clears throat> the expectation of the roles architecture is that the <clears throat> the messages that flow between the different roles in that in the most in that simple expression are <clears throat> are integrity protected and and maybe or maybe should be confidentiality protected if that if that was an under if that was understood up front then Looking at this diagram, people would not be confused as to what the role of of the of these our arbitrary routing decisions are. I am okay with a forward reference if the topological models require it, really. But uh, I, I would assume that net you now have the task to make sure that everything you want to see about those two orthogonal things that are integrity and confidentiality protection in the corresponding consideration sections. And if it's really necessary, oh my gosh, then we do a forward reference here. It's fine with me. I, I don't like those, but but if it helps to, to, to under, that people understand these are only flows and, and all the encryption and all the signing is dealt with in sections 12 and 11, I'm fine with that. Did I drop out or did I scare everyone? <laughs> <laughs> part no, of in, gen in general, I agree with you that I don't think that uh, we need to have discussion prior to this security, security consideration section, um, unless it's absolutely necessary. I'm not convinced that it's absolutely necessary. If it is, then I'm okay with that, but I don't think it is yet. And so just making sure that there's text in the security consideration section 
and I think you were trying to ask Ned to uh, uh, write that text or to verify that that text is already there in what Michael wrote. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. fine with that. I just I want to make sure that the des design team is on the same page. About what it, what we mean when we draw a diagram that shows an arrow going to a box that isn't that's, that's different from the the diagrams that's in the the, the roles diagram that's the simplest of these. Thanks, Mike. It looks good. I updated the my PR the twenty eight and uh, uh, it's also I introduced something about the trust model maybe the design team and have a look. You can see the fire page. The last paragraph is about the trust model is in the trust model section. Yeah, I see. Uh, I think you're switching between internal and local verifier. Did, did we agree on local or internal? I actually do not know anymore. <clears throat> I know we started out with local and remote. Yeah, so I think this is a local verifier. Then. Yeah, but previously the uh, it's in the right now it uses internal so i use the internal but okay. if you prefer local i can change that no no no, no. I, I i don't have a preference i just want uh, consistency uh and, and actually as i said okay. I, I forgot <laughs> sorry you're saying internal external instead of local and remote uh actually i think now is using internal and a remote It, those words tend to don't. Maybe I can. Yeah, I can change it to use to. I know, I know that. Yeah, we can make a quick call. Is everybody fine with local here? Then we can uh, unify this to uh, uh, being local verifier and then uh, have that bashed by the public, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either local and remote or internal, external, but not mixed. I don't know where all the other places we might be using remote, so.
there might be a reason to this, but the verifier has to trust the verifier here. So it's the uh, a remote verifier. Ah, verifier owner. I, I retract my comment. Verifier owner is a is a combined term. I've said nothing. In the in the case where roles are combined on the same entity, we don't need to talk about trust models because we implicitly assume that they're 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 the the entity trusts itself. Is that always true? Is everybody agreeing that an entity that has multiple roles, that these roles on this entity are uh, always explicitly trusting each other? I'm confused by this text, and so I'm just typing in my comment here. When you guys, <laughs> that line 331 I find is uh, ambiguous and confusing, so that's what I'm commenting on here. So your, your comment is incoming, okay. But in any case, I would, maybe this is independent of what you're just uh, commenting on, Dave. Um, so uh, if roles uh, are, are collapsed on a uh, entity, so if a thing is, for example, a verifier and a relying party at the same time, um, do these two roles have a explicit automatic trust relationship? So they trust each other uh, unconditionally. Is that always true? Is that our, our, our design, our architecture design? I assume it is, but I'm not sure. All right, I just entered my comment. Okay, if it addresses that, that's, that's fine. Um, you have to refresh or something, but. It's probably browser cache. <laughs> uh, Maybe I got the first comment. I didn't get the. Ah, uh, okay. Hold on. I gotta. Apparently, I have to do it. This button too. Hold on. How about now? Uh, okay. Reviewed now. <laughs> I know that is. This is confusing, right? Yeah. You said that, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. That yes. Is, that, is, that is. <laughs> the simple answer to yeah, uh, the owners. There's only one owner here uh, highlighted, but uh, it could be more, and these yeah. have to be distinguished. It, it would certainly be true to say the internal verifier must be trusted by the uh, internal verifier's endorser and the internal verifier's owner before getting the endor the the uh, endorsements. That would be true. But as phrased, it seems to be talking about the remote verifiers, endorser, and verifier owner. And I think that part would be false. Now, maybe that's the may uh, or something like that, but that's not explained why that would be true. So, what, what, I need more context. Why is this discussion relevant here? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the, if we have the understanding that. Sorry, I would say if we have the understanding that roles that are combined into the same entity um, implicitly to trust the entity need to talk about the interaction between the local roles. Yes, still, the local no, roles. Always, yes, again, sorry, uh, sorry for interrupting. Um, uh, still, I'm not sure if this is always true and if this is a fundamental architectural decision we want to make if something is collapsed onto entity trust relationships between these every role on the entity is, is is absolute i don't know i'm sorry Vipen, I don't what's interrupt. the what's the argument for why it isn't the case well i don't see the connection between the text that's being highlighted and, and what you're talking about hank because this is not talking about relationships between two entities in the same box this is talking about a relationship between a verifier and an endorser yeah, but this verifier is on an attester, correct? Okay. Yes, this is the, but this is the lead. This is where we have a lead attester, and it may be doing a verification for the yes. other attesters. Right. And so that uh, internal <laughs> verifier or local verifier, right, can get uh, endorsements from someplace, and it has an owner. 
which may be unrelated to the remote verifiers uh, owner and endorser. <clears throat> so, so I think that we're that's it's about the this. Text is overloading the diagram. We should pick one and talk about one. So, if, if the if the thing in the if the thing we're calling lead a tester is an attester, a local, you know, it's just a local attester, then let's talk about that use case. If the thing is a verifier, then let's talk about that as a thing, a different case. So I think that the text does that. Okay. There's the case where it has its own verifier. The other situation is the lead attester says it has a local verifier. Right. I'm and I would draw I would draw this diagram differently if the testing environment was a verifier. I wouldn't call it an attesting environment, I'd call it a verifier. And then you then we're then we're into the space of local verifier and remote verifier. There's two verifiers on the page. And we have to talk about what is the relationship between the two verifiers. It's a completely different diagram than this one. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I don't, I, I guess I don't think it's so different um, because I think one of the things we were trying to um, generalize is the case where the lead attester is a testing environment passes the evidence off to a the attester B's verifier receives an attestation result back and then provides that as part of its evidence. And we're trying to blur the, the that case, which is a sort of goes into a third dimension in this diagram from the case where somehow there is a local verifier because it doesn't matter to the the verif the verifier at the top of the boxes uh, thing how that how that process happened. I'm not sure I followed the words. That, well, uh, just as a rule of thumb, I don't think it's a good idea for the architecture document to actually include every possible permutation of every combination. Sure. So, uh, again, I, I don't disagree with a lot of the discussion, but I don't necessarily agree that all of the different things need to be in the architect in the architecture document. Mm. What 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 we care about you is have, you need to have enough representative things for people to draw their own conclusions and construct their own permutations. What the architecture yeah, should do is identify where we need definition in terms of the drafts. Right. So yeah. If we've already should defined be. the relationship between an attester and a verifier is evidence, and the relationship between a verifier and a relying party is attestation results. Then we can take those combinations and arbitrarily overload them, uh, you know, compose them and whatever. But it still doesn't change that the, the, you're passing the thing that is a local uh, attester is still passing evidence to a verifier, and the thing that is a local verifier is still passing attestation results to something else to a relying party, whether it's remote or whatever. You don't have to def define a diagram that, sh that shows all the permutations for how that works, right? But the, the, the reason that the composite device was interesting is because it says that there is, uh, as an attester, it's saying that it's receiving evidence and it's asserting another claim, which is that it's composing the, the B and C and dot, dot, dot components with the A component. That's the relevance of this diagram. It's, com it's this composite composition of structure, which is the important takeaway. Overloading verifier makes it really confusing unnecessary okay so um ned I, I i i hear what you're saying so the question is whether or not these two paragraphs below this belong in this or are germane to the discussion is what i think you're saying is that's not that's not the key point about the composite device 
about right. whether or not it has a verifier. Right. Um, so it's the top of the hour. I kind of like to think of the about this, and uh, I'd like to propose to merge the text that we had that we just did because it doesn't actually address the, your issue um, and open an issue with respect to that point. So I am still not okay with merging that one sentence that I commented on. If you right. deleted that uh, change and merged all the rest of it, I would probably be okay. So let me just look at the the rebase changes that I made. Um, and where was it? It was down here. Um, I am just copying roughly the same comment into the same spot. Sure. Thank you. Sure that it's. I, I didn't fi figure out how to. There you go. Up mm, I have a it drop. Works. I have a, another meeting. I I, I, I I just pushed my comment. Yeah, there it goes. Ah. So that's the sentence I don't think I agree with. So let's so let's see if we can fix this. And um, uh, there. The, uh, other things I think we should merge sooner than later, like line three twenty. There's. Okay. So I'll remove the sentence. So I'll remove this this sentence to here. Okay. Uh, the, the next sentence only flows with that sentence because one explicit way to establish and such situation. Doesn't make the, the 332 sentence doesn't make sense without the preceding sentence that I disagree with. The internal verifier, the local verifier may need to be trusted there. So endorser and the verifier owner. Okay, so I will remove that piece and I I don't think there's any meaning about its own. I think it's true for every verifier, and so I don't think it needs to be said here if you're saying every verifier is trusted by the by its own owner. I mean, I think that's a useful statement to make. That's true in every possible situation, not just this one. Uh, yes, and I added that in in the fifty uh, five hundred twenty one that okay. line. Yeah, I mentioned that in the trust motor section, the last paragraph, the green one. And so, uh, yeah. it, um, so I would want to talk about that one more because um, I think it may be because here I'm looking at the, the endorser has to trust the verifier before giving the endorsement to it. I think there's a lot of subtlety in there um, and to say why it may be trusting it for confidentiality, maybe. But other than confidentiality, I don't know that that's true when you say need to. Right. You can have endorsers that just supply endorsements to anybody who asks, as long as there's nothing confidential in them, with no trust whatsoever. It may just be a public thing. You go and ask it and say, sure, I'll give you my endorsement of anybody that, 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 that you want. I can say, yes, I made that device. I don't care who asks me. I don't have any trust. You can ask me, and I'll respond with my service. And so this need to, I don't know that that's true. Yeah, so I, I think you may you mean it's an optional uh, choice. Uh, the endorser may need to trust yeah. or because that it, may not, it yeah i understand your point depends on how you get the endorsements from the endorser to the verifier right if it's a pull method mechanism where the verifier just goes and asks the endorser whenever it needs to for example and this is what um intel's service does with their currently deployed uh, attestation then it doesn't know who's asking right you can ask the service and it'll give you the the uh, certificate or whatever that says yes that's a valid intel machine yeah. So can can I say just uh, can I uh, add a may in in there saying like that the endorser and the verifier the may need to trust and is that uh, uh, can can that be okay? Um, I don't know. I mean, you can say may for all kinds of different things. I don't know whether there's a reason for lots of mays to be in the architecture document. And so I'd say I don't know yet because. It's important for there to be maze if that actually affects what other documents have to be written. But if it's just, you know, well, there's all kinds of different maze. I don't know if that's if why don't you, why don't you propose that? So Tave, I removed the sentence. Okay. Okay. Um, this commit and uh, which sentence? Did you remove the bottom? We've been talking about the bottom paragraph. We've been talking yeah. about the bottom paragraph. I've I've removed the part in on the above right. thing, but I don't know. I I I didn't quite um 
we're talking about problems with the other paragraph yeah, too. I know you're now talking about problems with the other paragraph. So yeah. that's why I'm I'm coming back to the circle. So um th this this part down here. Uh yes, line five eighteen, I think is not true. At least I'm not convinced that line five eighteen, the need to, I don't think that's true. And so what um uh what I was just saying is that what if need to became me in there? And that's what I was commenting on. Well, sure, there's lots of other possible mays that you could add. Why is this one significant if this is a may? And so I am un you're I, I'm unconvinced. Yes. You're suggesting the may belongs. No, I'm may suggesting to, may need to trust. Also, may need to trust. Is that where that where the may is it, I'm I'm not saying we have to put the sentences. I'm just trying to understand them to be clear. It's it's, so it's I, I gave other examples as why need to is incorrect. I understand uh, that. And whether we need to have the May statement, I don't know yet. In other words, whether it should be absent or present, I do not have any strong opinion yet, and I would want to discuss more. Okay, so I'm going to leave this as, uh, 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 actually, I really prefer to, to merge the other changes and remove this, this not merge this paragraph for now. Uh, right, if we can split those into two separate things, keep one open and merge the other one. Meaning, like the change yeah, in three twenty yeah. and three twenty three. Please merge. Yeah. I I will I will. Yeah, I'll figure that out. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michael. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good day. All right, let's keep discussing this next time. So, all right, I got to drop. Paragraph. Okay. So then I do this. Um, 